Hello all. Today we have yet another piece of work on hand and talking about Tamil Sangam literature. We have a lot of doubts regarding the date of several works that are available on hand today. Well, scholars have a lot of disagreements on the dates of several works, but what they unanimously agree upon is that they are all expertly written and most of them are more than 3000 years old. We have to understand that these literary works are not mere records of language alone. They are records of social history as well. Because most of the works give us detailed accounts about the political situation that prevailed during that period, who the kings were, what sort of region they ruled, what sort of people lived over there, what their civilization was, how the society prevailed, their lifestyle, their food style, the flora, the fauna, the surrounding, everything has been recorded in the forms of poems, especially in the Sangam literature. And the poem that we have on hand today is of course more than 3000 years old. Talking about Sangam literature, we have to take into account what the famous Tolkapir has put forward. Tolkapir says that the genres of literary works can be split or rather the poems can be classified into five types. They are Panatripade. Panatripade refers to poems that guided minstrels. Pulavaratripade, poems that guided poets. Kutaratripade, poems that guided performing artists. Viraliatripade, poems that guided women artists. And Purunaratripade, poems that guided bards. These were the five categories of poems that we have on hand today. Thanks to Dr. Uvesa or called U.V. Swaminatha Iyer and his team who dedicated most of their lifetime in searching for such literary works and bringing them in print form. And it is our duty to pass these rich literary forms on to our future generations so that they will know where our roots lie and our roots are not shallow, they are deeper than we know. Today, we are going to deal with translation of Sirupana Tripadi, written by Idekali Nallur Nattatanar. Idekali is a small place in the Chengalpad district of southern India. Sirupana Tripadi talks about a king who is lesser known. Most of the historians have told us about Cheras, Cholas, Pandyas, lot of kings, who ruled over vast kingdoms. But only such literary works tell us about kings who really were on par with the Cheras, Cholas and Pandyas. Some of them were even better. Today we are going to deal with one such king who was indeed on par with all the three or rather he was better than all the three put together. We are going to deal with Nalli Akodan of Oiman Kingdom. The Oiman Kingdom spreads from a hilly region near Velur and it extended till the seashore or rather the eastern coast. So it had all types of land which are mentioned in ancient literature. It had the mountain area, it had lush fertile farmlands, it had thick forests and it had seashore as well. It also had desertous land on the outskirts. When we say desert, we are not talking about dunes of sands with no trees or plants and camels roaming around. No, that is the picture given to us by modern historians or rather modern fiction tellers. What we are talking about is the area where rains totally abandoned. Rains forgot their duties to perform and such areas turned out dry and were termed as palainilum or deserts. So we are not talking about sandy areas, we are talking about dry areas with humid climate. We should get into the poem and we will know that we are going to deal with a king who is praised so much. Is he really worth it? We shall get in the poem and know more about him. Sirupana Tripade, Minstrel's Guide Nila Mahalin Totram Mani Malay Pani Tol Manila Madande Ani Mule Tuyal Varu Um Aram Pola Selpunal Ulanda, Seivaral Kanyatru, Kolkarinarum, Puril Kuil Kudainda, Udirta Pudum Punj, Chemmal Shudi, Pudinerit, Kadipa Viritana, Kalaganunangaral. The land dames beauty. 
the land dame with gem crests and sturdy shoulders, like a dangling necklet flowing over her bust. The river from the peaks blend with the forest floods, thoroughly distressed, brimming banks, balmy groves where the songbirds scatter, fresh locks curled up like the fine ebony sand. We have been introduced to the mountain of Oyman Kingdom. It resembles the bust of a woman who is wearing a beautiful necklace. The Oyman Kingdom on the hilly area is almost desertous. So the rivers that flowed are no longer there. They have changed their course completely, leaving only a blank sandy stretch. This sandy stretch, where once a very rich river flowed, is now completely barren. And that barren piece of land resembles a necklace on the neck of a dame. Ilaiparum Panan Ailurupanaya Agi Aidu Nadandu Vailurupatra Vimparal Kripa Vainil Nindra Vimpada Varinal Kalai Nyayit Kadirkada Urupa Palai Nindra Palai Niduvari Suran Mudal Maratha Varinidal Asayi Where the minstrel rests. Tiptoe walked like one stepped on white hot iron. As the roasted pebbles tore one's feet, one fine day of the hottest summer when the sun shot his blazing beams, through the deserted deserts with leafless trees casting spindly shadows. So, we start our journey on a summer day. Remember, Oyman Kingdom is mostly desertous and it's the peak of summer. All the leaves on the trees have dried out and the sheets that are cast by the trees are extremely thin. They are not lush. Had they been lush, the minstrels who are travelling by would find it very shady. But they find it extremely hot to travel, so they had to rest wherever it's possible to. And as and when they take rest, they find that it's getting hotter by the day. So let us continue our journey with our minstrels and see what they are up to. Firalierin Arahu Aidhuvil Igupayal Arahu Kondu Aruli Nei Kanindiruli Akadipin Kadupuyana Madi Vain Kalabam Parapi Palavudan Mail Mail Kulikum Sayel Sai Uyangunai Navin Yel Eril Asai Vayangiri Ularia Adi in Adi Todarn the Irn the Nilam Toyum Irum Piditadakayin Sayn the Wooden Serin the Kurang in Kurangiana Malvare Urhi a Vare Vare Po in a Pulin the Odi Nadichine Venga in Al Malar Natchi, Kadichurum Baratrum Sunangin, Sunanga Pidirin the Yanar Kungin, Avir Muhe Yildi, Unagatu Dingi Avim Mulai, Mulay and Avan Coat Penate Balatu Nungin, In Ser Ihutarum, Eitrin Eiraena, Kulai Ampuravin, Kuvi Muhay Avilda, Mulay Sandra Karpin Meliel, Madama Nokin, Vanudal, Viralier, The Lovely Lady Minstrels. Like the first Teddy Drizzle's beauty unmatched, anointed deepish dark hair, and a competing the luster of the blue gem like plumes of several peacocks that shy away, gossamer like the tongue of a weary dog, beauty beyond words, so dazzling to dim though shiny jewels not worn, firm on land fixed like trunk of a she elephant, their shapely thighs play so close to each other, thick clocks that flow down like bowed plantain. Tipped with tightly closed blossom, their knotted ends, golden freckles like deceivingly fresh blooms on large kino branches, raided by buzzers relishing nectars from golden pollens, scattered golden silk cotton flowers from their tree, like teasing buds that bear the jewels over their bosoms, similarly rounded palm fruits, so huge and bearing the sweetest juices, their sweetest flavor shining through their pearly teeth, that shine like jasmine buds amidst dark leaf weeds, the chastity purest for sure. The beady eyed, bowed neck lady minstrels. Here, we are given a detailed description about the lady minstrels who are traveling along with our head minstrel. Minstrels are poets who often played small lutes to accompany their songs. And their troupe would normally be large enough and they would have chorus singers, lead female singers, dancers. Sometimes they might even have little boys and girls serving them. 
Now, our Lady Minstrel's beauty is elaborately given in the poem. This is one of the traditions that were followed in Sangam literary poems. Either they were Pada di Kesa Varnane means toe to head description or Kesa di Pada Varnane, which means head to toe descriptions. So here the poet compares the very lustrous hair of the lady minstrels to the huge thick trunk of an elephant. He says that they are extremely beautiful, they have long locks of hair and their eyes are so shiny like pieces of gems on jewels that are never been owned. If you notice the difference, the jewels that we often wear are a bit dull when compared to those that are safely kept in our safes. So he says that their eyes are very shiny, sharp, they seem very shrewd and their skin is glowing and they are very young as well. Now the lady minstrels are accompanying our main head minstrel. They are moving towards some place. We are not sure where. So we should continue with the poem. Viraliyarin kalai tadavi vidum ilayargal. Nadai melinda asaiyar nalmen siridi kalla ilayar mella taivara. As the juveniles pamper the lady minstrels. Those dainty small feet, tired of long weary walks, pressed and pampered by low bro juveniles. The poet compares the lady minstrels' feet to that of the dried up weary dog's tongue. A dog which runs far away will be gasping for breath and its tongue would be hanging out. Imagine touching the tongue of a dog, it will be very soft at the same time, dry. So he says that the lady minstrels' feet are something similar to a dog's tongue. And like I said, these minstrels would often be accompanied by small girls and boys. These kids were employed to serve the minstrels. These juveniles would help the lady minstrels with their makeup, their dressing, and of course they would massage their feet whenever they are tired. So these lady minstrels are extremely tired and the juveniles are helping them to relax. Parisin Petra Panan Kurumatudan Mandapanane Sandikiran Pun Vartan Puriadan Kanarambin Inkural Serial Idava in Tari Naivalam Parani and Nain Teri Palai Kaival Pan Mahan Kadanar in the Yaka Yanga Vayat Valio Nasayi Tunikur Yava Modutuyar Art Trupat Mudivigan the Irinda Muduai Iraval When the minstrels meet Golden twisted entwined stringed, sweet toned harpy harp held to the left. Showering sandy melodies on the dunes of the desert by the skilled minstrels sure of nuances. Wander in search of the perfect helping hand to wipe the distressing distress of crushing poverty. O oh, adept minstrel, wipe your long languor. Here, our group of minstrels happen to meet another group of minstrels who are returning from the kingdom of Koima. They are bestowed with a lot of gifts. They seem rich, whereas the other group of minstrels seem extremely poor. Now, the rich minstrels is head. He starts talking to the head of the poor minstrel. And he says that his days of poverty are going to come to an end. He says that all he has to do is listen to what he has to say. He will tell him where exactly they have to head. That place would really wipe them off their poverty. So where is he going to lead them to? Let us move forward. Chiranatin Varamai Kurumin Kuraya Odungi Val Idakal Kalinir me in the Kayava Yerumai Paingari Nivanda Palavin Nidal Manjal Melile Mayir Puram Taivara Vidaya Yilangal Nara Mel Kubu Pera Kulavi Pali Payal Kulum Kudapulam Kavalar Muruman Unnar Vada Pulaymeat the Wangavil Purita Yerural Tinitol Yel Ter Kutuan Varupunal Vail Vanjim Varide Ado Vandre The Opulent Cheras The poet is starting his comparison. He is going to compare the Cheras, Pandyas, and the Cholas with King Naliopodin. What is he going to tell about all these people? Let us see. Struts braving, shoals of stout fish, the wide-mouthed buffaloes graze on scarlet water lilies. Along the shades of pepper twine jackfruit trees, spindly turmeric leaves brushing its thick hide. 
tender unripe balmy jacks nibbled softly resting on a bed of wild jasmine strewn the guardian of the west hair of the chera clan northern foe slaughtered to carve his bow on the himalayan crest ironwood shouldered skillful charioteer kuttuvan with the never flowing river the land of vanji belittled and moreover The poem Sirvana Trupade was drafted somewhere around 3rd and 5th century of the classical era. And during that time the Chera dynasty was ruled by Cheran Kutuvan. His clan is known for bravery and valor. They ruled the southernmost and southwest part of South India. They were extremely brave and few of his hares even climbed up to the Himalayas and unfurled their flag there. The Cheras' crest was the bow and arrow and they were feared by invaders from the north and far away as well. Here the poet says that the Chera kingdom was extremely lush, green because it was wet with the ever-flowing river of Kaveri. a branch of kaveri in fact and the chera kingdom had its capital city as vanji which is the present day karur the poet says that even the buffaloes in the chera dynasty or the chera kingdom were extremely sophisticated they used to rest on bed of jasmines that were strewn by the wild bushes so such rich dynasty such rich kingdom is not equivalent to the kingdom of oima was the king nalli kodan better than the chera king kutuvan what is the poet trying to say well he is not stopping there he is giving us yet another comparison he is going to compare nalli kodan with the pandya king and the poem goes like this pandya nadin perumai naruvai uraikum nagumudir nunavathu arevai kurunduni ailuli poruda kaipuni seppam kadaindha marbin செய்யும் கண்ணி செவி முதல் திருத்தி நோன் பகட்டு மணர் ஒழுகையோடு வந்த மகா அரண்ணமந்தி மடவோர் நகா அர் அண்ணன் அளி நீர் முத்தம் வாழ்வாயிருத்தின் வயிற்றகத்தடக்கி தோல்புறம் அரைக்கும் நல்கூர் நசுப்பின் உளறியல் ஐம்பால் உமட்டியர் ஈன்ற கிளர்பூன் புதல்வரோடு கிளிகிளி ஆடும் தத்து நீர் விரைப்பின் கொற்கை கோமான் தென்புலம் காவலர் மருமான் உன்னார் மண்மார் கொண்ட மாலை வெண்குடை கண்ணார் கண்ணி கடுந்தேர் செழியன் தமிழ் நிலை பெற்ற தாங்கரு மரபின் மகிழ்ந்தனை மருகின் மதுரையும் மரிதே அதோ அன்று திம்போசிங் பாண்டியாஸ் த ஹனி ட்ரிப்பிங் மெச்சூர் மல்பரி ட்ரீஸ் கட் டெலிகேட்லியன்ஸ் கல்டர் டு ஃபினிஸ் ஸ்கில்ஃபுல்லி கார்வ்ட் அண்ட் ஸ்ட்ராங் ஃபோர் பூசம்ஸ் டேங்லிங் ஹேண்ட் கிராஃப்டட் ஃபைபர்ஸ் கார்லன் அண்ட் த இயர் லூப்ஸ் மைட்டி ஆக்சன் ஸ்ட்ரக் வித் த கார்ட் ஆஃப் அஃப்ளுவென்ஸ் சால்ட் ட்ரேடர்ஸ் with a pampered monkey draping pearls young like the coy teeth of damsels held inside clam like mouth the slim waisted sturdy shoulders covered with plates in five parts the consorts of him as the bejewel kids rattle along with flowing borders along korkai and its king the shield of south from the royal clan who conquered four lands and pearls and canopies the charismatic racing charioteer Cherian where Tamil rooted its legacy so firm the buzzing streets of Madurai fade moreover so the poet starts comparing king nalikodan with the pandya king cherian here the poet employs a lot of pun and he is very sarcastic about the richness of pandya kingdom he says that when he went to the pandya kingdom he noticed how many salt traders were traveling on ox driven carts these ox driven carts were loaded with fat salt traders and they are equally fat wives they had something interesting along with them it was not the kids who were playing with rattles it was the monkeys who accompanied the salt traders and his family the monkeys were bejeweled they had long strings of pearls around their necks and they were clad in silk gowns they were made to resemble small kids they were accompanying the real human kids of the salt traders 
So the poet here says that the richness of Pandya kingdom was so much that they never cared to even jewel a monkey. They were ready to give the pearls and diamonds even to monkeys. So that rich was the Pandya kingdom. What about Nalia Kodan? He says the kingdom of Nalia Kodan was even better. Is it so? Well, we are not stopping here. We are going to move forward and have yet another stronger dynasty, the Cholas. What does the poet have got to say? We shall continue with the poem. Chola Nartin Pirame Naranir Poihai Adekari Nivanda Turanir Kadambin Tunayar Kodai Ovatan Unture Marangil Kovatan Kungaser Puraitalin Varumule and Van Muhayodind Tirumugamavar in the Devat Tamari Asuil Angai Arakato in the Ne Say either put in the Sempur Kotte Yema in Tunei Tari Raguvalanda Kamarutumbi Kamaram Sepum Tanpani Tadei Talara Irkai Kunapulam Kavalar Maruman on Nar Ungail Kadavum Urmuchel Surium Tungail Erinda Todivulang Tadaki Nada Nalise Natre Sembian Oda putkai urandayum varide ado vandru. The enchanting cholas. Fragrant waters gushing along the banks, bordered with haughty caramba trees, huddle like garlands, a fresh painted like on canvas by the fresh water springs. Peaved moths scatter golden specks of dust along. The large buds that resemble tender breasts bloom like charming fairies that divine lotus. Bees buzzing around with mild scarlet petals, like chased palm pied with golden center. With the winged embrace of its partner, buzz a lustful tune of sea macaram notes. He, from the lush forte lands of East, the guardian king of the braver clan, of the lofty bulwarks that frighten his foes. And the mighty arms that crushed those rebels, he who magnetized fame, the enchanting Chola of the bold Urayur fame, too small, and so. The poet here introduces us to the Chola dynasty, which had its capital as Urayur. Urayur is somewhere near today's Trichirapalli in South India. And the Chola kingdom was known for its efficient ruling system. The subjects of Cholas were extremely liberal, they were extremely talented and brave. And so of the three dynasties that ruled the southern part of India, the Cholas were able to establish everlasting fame in the history of South India. But here the poet says that the picturesque beauty of the Chola kingdom, the rich natural resources that the kingdom had can never be compared to the Oima kingdom of Nalliya Kodan, Kadayilu Vallal Halin Sirappu, the seven royal Samaritans. According to Tamil literature, there were seven kings who actually ruled different parts of southern India. They are Pagan, Pari, Kari, Ai Andiran, Adigan or Adiyaman, Nalli and Ori. The poem is going to give a brief introduction to each of the kings and he's going to compare their generosity or generous acts with Nalliya Kodan. Pagan Vanam Vaita Vadamalai Kava An Kanamanyai Kalingam Nalgiya Aruntira Lanangin Avir Pirumahan Pirungal Nadan Paganum When the sudden showers wet the bedazzled plumes, he who cloaked the lovely wet fowl the brave, bold, and bountiful of the Avir clan, ruler of tall pigs, Pagan too. King Pagan ruled a province named Avinankudi, which is the present Parani, and they were a people who took care of cows. They were cow herds by profession, and the head was King Pagan. Now, what is so special about Pagan is that he was known for his spontaneous actions. He never gave second thoughts when it came to helping people. It is said that one fine evening, he was taking a walk along his orchard, which was at the foothills of Parani Hills. The Parani Hills is known for its lush evergreen beauty. It had a lot of secret herbs as well. Even today, it is full of herbs and 
and ecologists have made sure that people don't strut inside and damage the beauty of the ecology over there so now king pagan was taking a walk in his orchard and it started raining all on a sudden he happened to see a peacock taking shelter under a tree and the peacock was literally enjoying the rain if you have noticed peacocks dancing in the rain you will notice that they would send a shiver they would feel as if they are vibrating king pagan who is known for his magnanimous actions mistook the shivering of the peacock to that of the shivering due to rain and cold immediately he pulled out a shawl and covered the peacock with his silk shawl people though were amazed that the king didn't even give a second thought that the peacock was a natural creature it would obviously know how to protect itself from the rain but king did not even give a second thought he pulled out a shawl and wanted to protect the peacock from rains and so he became the first of the seven samaritans who are known for generosity but here the poet says even the spontaneous action of pagan is nothing when compared to the spontaneity of king naliyakovu that is yet another person following pagan who was he pari surumbuna naruvi uraikum naganeduvali sirvi mullaikku perundeer nalgiya pirangu vel naruvi veelum saaral parambin koman pariyum to quench those thirsty bees the path tightly dotted with fragrant iron wood trees he who left his royal carriage for the slender jasmine creepers the ruler of crashing cascades of the moist mounds of parambu pari too king pari also called vel pari ruled over the kingdom name parambu nadu the parambu nadu is uh, somewhere between modern day tamil nadu and kerala the border of it where the western ghats are present western ghats are known for heavy rainfall and it is one such evergreen lands that king pari ruled over one day king pari was walking across the forest it was a very tiresome day after a hunt and pari left his chariot to take a drench in the river nearby and he was feeling thirsty as well so he wanted a drink after some time pari and his troop returned and when he was about to get on his chariot he noticed that the chariot's wheel was covered with a tiny slender jasmine creeper noticing that the creeper wanted some sort of support pari ordered his men to leave the chariot there so that the creeper would happily take over his chariot people who passed by the forest over period of days noticed that the entire chariot was covered with jasmine creepers and thus he is called mullaikku theertanda pari pari who donated his chariot to the creeper of jasmines but our poet says that even this action of pari cannot be compared with nalliyakodan's generosity so what is so special about nalliyakodan we have to wait because there is one more in line kari கரங்குமணி வால் உலை புறவியோடு வையகம் அருள ஈரநல் மொழி இரவலர்க்கு இந்த அழல் திகழ்ந்து இமைக்கும் அருஞ்சுவரு நெடுவேல் கழல் தொடித்தடக்கை காரியும் காரி ரிங்கோபெல்ஸ்விஷிங் டெயில்ஸ் ஆஃப் ஒயிட்டஸ்ட் ஹார்ட்ஸ் ஆஃப் த வேர்ல்ட் ஆர் அபனவலன் ஹார்ட் ஆஃப் ஸ்வீட்டஸ்ட் வேர்ட்ஸ் தட் ஆல்வேஸ் கேவ் ரேஜிங் ஃபேரி மினேசிங்லி லாங் ஸ்பியர் ஸ்ட்ராங்கெஸ்ட் ஆர்ம்ஸ் தட் ஹெல்ட் இட் எக்ஸ்பர்ட்லி காரி ஆல்சோ Malayaman Tirumudi Kari he was a ruler of a kingdom named Kovalur and now it is called Tirukoilur which is near Kallakuruchi district of south india he was one of the minor chieftains now kari came from a clan who often accompanied kings who ruled over larger kingdoms he and his people were known for their daring feat and their extreme bravery on battle fronts so kari was often bestowed with lot of gifts from the kings who turned victorious just because kari and his troop backed them up kari was not at all selfish he often distributed or always distributed what was given to him as gifts to people who came to him in search of patronage or people who came seeking arms and so the poet says that kari is lesser when compared to the unselfish attitude of nalliyakodan 
So we are going to deal with a very great king who is better than Pagan, better than Pari, better than Kari. And there are four more Samaritans who are etched in ancient Sangam literature. I Andiran Nilalthigal Nilanaham Nalhiyakalingam Alamar Silvadar Kamardanna Kodutta Savam Tangiya Sandapular Tinitol Arvanan Muri Ayum I Andiran Dazzling bright sapphires from slithering serpent, its skin, the three eyed resting under the great banyan gifted, bow, bone by sturdy sandal pastel shoulders, and the bearer of compassionate words, I as well. I Andirin was the ruler of a kingdom called Ayakudi. He was known for an extreme generous act. There was a belief that a very rare snake, which was sapphire blue in color, shed its skin only once in its entire lifetime. And the person who possessed the skin of the blue snake would be gifted with everlasting riches. Such a skin came to the hands of a sage who was meditating on the Podige Hills, which was uh, the hill by the town of Ayakuri. Now, this sage had no purpose for the snake's skin, and so he was wondering to whom he can hand over it. One fine day, I Andirin came by the forest, and he was searching for his hunt. The sage who found him thought that he was the perfect person to possess the snake's skin because with everlasting riches, the already generous king would have a lot more to give people. And so he handed over the snake's skin to I Andirin. Now I Andirin was totally puzzled. He wondered how he could make use of the snake's skin. He did not want uh, the snake's skin to be under his possession for a long time. He was searching for the right person who can carry it forward. And at the time, he came across a Shivalingam, the idol of Lord Shiva under a banyan tree. Without giving a second thought, I Andirin gave the snake skin to Lord Shiva. He claimed that Lord Shiva, who was the protector of the entire world, deserved the skin more than he did. Such was his spontaneity. But once again, our poet says that even this selflessness of I Andirin is nothing when compared to Nalia Godin's selflessness. We have another magnanimous king in line. Who is he? We shall continue with the poem. Adigan Malvare Kamal Poon Charal Kavini and Nelly Amel the Vile Team Kani Awake in the Uravasinam Kanalum Ulitigal Niduvel Aravak Kadal Thani Adiganum Of towering peaks with fragrant slopes that yielded special berry, so succulent and sweet gifted to Avayar. He with his blazingly robust and sharp spear, head of an ocean of army, Adigan too. Adigan or Adiaman as he is popularly known, is known for his magnanimous act of handing over a very special gooseberry to Saint Avayar. Adiaman belonged to the Vailir dynasty and his kingdom was called the Kungunada which had parts of Tamil Nadu and Kerala of present day. The capital city was Tagadu and it had a small hillock. The hillock had a very special gooseberry tree which did not yield any fruit for a very long time. The locals knew that the gooseberry tree gave just one berry in its entire lifetime and it had special healing powers. It was fit enough to extend the lifespan of any human being. And one day, a farmer who passed by the tree noticed that a gooseberry had grown. He immediately plucked the fruit of the tree and handed it over to his king, his beloved king, Adiyaman. Adiyaman was extremely generous, was once visited by Saint Avayar. He thought that more than him, she deserved to have the gooseberry because she was rendering a great service to Tamil and literature. And hence, he gave the succulent gooseberry to Saint Avayar. 
Our poet says that even this generous act is little less when compared to the generous acts of Nalli Akodan. We have yet another Samaritan waiting in line and his name is Nalli. Karavadu nattoru appa nadai parigaram muttadu kudutta munai vilanga thadakkai. Thuli malai poriyum vali thunja nidu ngootta nali malai nadan nalliyum. Unforgetful of the needs of friends and their necessities, gifted with no limits of his giving hands from constantly showering breezy peaks of hills of Nalli, home to Nalli, Nida. King Nalli ruled over a hilly region named Kandiram. Kandiram is also called as Thoti Hills, which is the present day's Thotabeta of the Nilgari Hills. He was a chieftain. And he ruled over his kingdom very effectively. Once, a group of poets happened to pass by the forest. There, feeling very tired, they rested under a tree and were waiting for some kind of help. They happened to meet a very young man, looking very charming and very brave, passing by their way. The young man inquired about them, and when he came to know that they had travelled from far away, Without even asking them, he started cooking up a fire. He had pieces of meat with him, looked like he had hunted down a deer. So he started cooking the meat. He served them with a lot of love. He brought fresh water from a nearby spring and served it as well. After having their fill, the head of the poet's group asked who he was. But for that, the young man simply smiled and left the place. Later on, the poet came to know that he was none other than Nalli himself. Yet another good thing about Nalli and his family is being explained by the poet. Not only Nalli and the men folks of his family, but his women folks were equally down to earth and generous. Another anecdote states that when a group of poets seeking patronage with Nalli arrived, Nalli was absent. But two women generously invited them in, served them with hot piping food, very tasty variety of food items, and gave them a lot of gifts when they were about to leave. Later on, they learned that they were none other than the wives of Nalli and his brother. So the women folks were equally generous. Now here, our poet steps in and says that we need not get lost with the generosity of Nalli and his family because Nalli Akodan's family was one step ahead of these people. So we have one more Samaritan waiting for us to be sung. Who is he? He is Ori. Nalli sinai narumbodu kangiliya nagu mudir nagatthu kurumporei nal nadu kodi arke inda kari kudirai kari odu malinda ori kudirai oriyum ina angu yedu samam kadanda yedu ural thini thol. Ori, clotted branches bearing fragrant flowers of the young and old sorangi trees, the gifted lands from small peaks and smart plains for artisans. Kari, the horse, one from the namesake that fought, with Ori, the horse of Ori, where the seven fought and won them with sturdy shoulders. The Ori belonged to a fighter clan and he was the chief of his clan. He was an adversary of Kari, whom we have already seen about. He fought valiantly. He brought a lot of riches from the king on whose side he fought. He made sure that the side on which he was, he and his troops were, were always victorious and he never kept anything for himself. So once again, we have a very selfless person who is being compared to Nalli Akodan. So summing up, the seven Samaritans, the poet says, were nothing at all when compared to Nalli Akodan. He was in fact all seven Samaritans put together incarnate. Nalli Akodan was the best after the period of the seven Samaritans. Nalli Akodan in Igai Serappu Yelver Punda Ige Sindham, Virikadal Veli Vialaham Bilanga, Urtam Tangi Oranriya Nuntal, Naruvi Naham Agilum Aramum, Turayad Mahalirk Tolpunayahi, Purupunal Taruvum Pokkar Maravin, Tolmailangai Karuod Peria, Nal Mailangai Mandarulum, Maruin Riverangi, Vaduil Vival, Urupulitupin Ovir Pirumahan, Kalitra Tarumbair in the Kalal Tayangatirin the Adi, 
பிடிக்கணம் சிதறும் பெயல் மழை தடக்கை பல்லிய கோடியர் புரலவன் பேரிசை the best of samaritans nalliya kodam the weight of seven cell true some bone for the goodness of the land fenced by the seas by the one single handedly held scented surangi agarwood and sandalwood layered as shoulder pads for bathing dames those gifted by speeding waters of destructible traditions at the genesis of the city of the famed ilangai the good city of ma ilangai of chieftains many the unmatched perfectly skilled swordsmanship with the prowess of a tiger born of ovia clan and a strut with firm strips like a bull elephant donator of elephants him with his generous hands lord protector of parts so we are given a proper introduction to the kingdom of oimar its capital ma vilangai and king naliyapodan the poet says that ma ilangai or peru ilangai as it was called in the ancient times was the capital city of oiman kingdom it was a very fertile land and it had several rivers at one point of time due to certain natural geographical shifts the kingdom over a period of time turned a little barren when it was still fertile the rivers used to bring pieces of sandalwood and agarwood and that were being used by the women folks of the kingdom Now the name Ma Ilangai or Ilangai would strike a chord somewhere. Is it not the name for Sri Lanka, which is the country just below India? Well, there is a small story behind the name and the kingdom and the king's clan. At one point of time, when people were distributing themselves across various parts of the world, one troop called Ovier group. Now, Ovier actually in modern Tamil refers to artist. artists as in people who can draw and paint but we are not talking about painters or artists we are talking about a clan who built buns for dams since the buns when raised produced the sound o they were given the name ovier and so this clan named ovier clan moved into india southern part of india in that group the head was a woman who was carrying at that time and she delivered a baby a boy who started taking over the entire clan from then on so now naliyakodan belongs to this particular clan called ovier and they are a subsection of the people called nagas who are known for their artistic skills and hence since they shifted over from the actual ilangai peru ilangai is the name of sri lanka which was given back then in the ancient times and since they shifted into a new place since they wanted to retain the name they renamed the place as ma vilangai and thus ma vilangai became the capital city of kingdom of oiman parisapetra panan mannane paadi sendra murai nalliya kodanai nayanda kolhayodu thaangaru marabin tannum tandai வான்புருநெடுவரை வளனும் பாடி முன்னாள் சென்றனம் ஆகை நாள் த சாங் ஆஃப் த கிஃப்ட் மீட்டிங் நாளிய கோடன் த ஒன்லி டார்கெட் ஹிம் ஆஃப் வேர்தி அன்சஸ்ட்ரி ஹி அண்ட் ஹிஸ் ஃபாதர் பிரைஸ் அலாங் வித் ஹிஸ் ரிச் கிங்டம் அண்ட் பீக் ஸ்டால் லைக் தி ஸ்டேச்சர் சாங் பை அஸ் அஸ் வி கேன் பேக் தென் த போயட் கண்டினியூஸ் டு கிவ் அ ப்ரீஃப் இன்ட்ரோடக்ஷன் ஆர் அதர் டிஸ்கிரிப்ஷன் அபவுட் த ரிச் அன்சஸ்ட்ரி ஆஃப் நாளிய not only nalliya kodan but also his ancestors were very generous they were very accommodating people and that's why they were loved by their subjects nalliya kodanai kaanum mun nirundha verumai nilai thirava kanna sai sevi kurulai karava pal mulai kavardal nonadu punittu nai kuraikum pullen nattil kaal sor mudusuvar kanachidal aritha bhoomi pootha pulal kaalambi olga pasi ulanda odungunun marungal வளைக்கை கிணை மகள் வள்ளூகிர் குறைத்த குப்பை வேளை உப்பிலி வெந்தை மடவோர் காட்சி நாணிக்கடை அடைத்து இரும்பேர் ஒக்கலோடு ஒருங்கு உடன் விசையும் அழிப்பசி வருத்தம் வீட தர்டன் ஆஃப் பாவர்டி பிஃபோர் மீட்டிங் நல்லிய கோடன் தென் வித் நியூ பார்ன் பப்ஸ் வித் கேர்ல் இயர்ஸ் ஹார்ட்லி ஐஸ் ஓப்பன் தட் அன்பேரபிளி சக்கல் த ட்ரை டீத்ஸ் எம்டி ஆஃப் ஃபீட் த ரீசன்ட்லி டெலிவர்ட் பிட்ச் வைண்ட் ஆஃப் பெயின் கேர்ல்ட் இன் ஆர் டஸ்டி ஸ்டவுஸ் against the withering walls and tumbling roof frames eroded by termites from wasted soil 
bearing bentiered mushrooms. From the wasted soil bearing bentiered mushrooms, ways slim down of long bitten hunger. Bangled woman who hits the dry well to snap with long nails those wild spinach, cooked sand salt behind closed doors to dodge scathing censures. Large family dined together as tradition to wipe the sad scar of hunger caused. The poet gives a very detailed description about the poverty in which they suffered before meeting Nali Akorin. We have to understand that not all kings were generous. And if at all they found a king who was generous, he was not within the reach of people who were in need of patronage. Very few poets who came back guided the other poets or bards or minstrels to seek patronage with the king whom they have already met. So poets, minstrels, performing artists were often in deep poverty. So our poet explains how poor he and his family were before meeting Nali Akkori. He says that they are bitch used to sleep in their dry stove because they never cooked. They did not have provisions to cook. And his wife used to go in search of wild spinach or greens. And out of shame that people might see uh, her going in search of wild greens, she used to shut the door and cooked. They were a large family and so they dined and shared whatever little food they had. They had to go hungry for days together. And this was all wiped away only after meeting Nali Akodin. So our minstrel is actually doing a very good job of guiding the other poor minstrel by asking him to go meet Nali Akodin. Nali Akodin in Varumai Pokia Vallan Mai. Polikavul Tarukan Putkai Tayangu Mani Marungin. Sirukan Yana Yodu Perundere Edi Yamavan Nindrum Varudum. The benefactor who banished poverty, oozing must from the broad forehead and built mighty beady eyed tuskers, huge chariot cars bestowed by him from where we do return. So he gives a very brief description of what he was given. The poet says that the king gifted them with huge elephants, very royal looking chariots and many more gifts and so they are no longer poor. Pananin Atrupadatum Panbu Nirum Ivan Nayandir in the Irumpe Rukkal Simmal Ulla Muda Selkivira in the minstrel's guidance. March you and your beloved troop so large to him with high hopes and pure thoughts. So he urges the poor minstrel to move forward. He is asking him to go, go ahead, cross these areas, you will reach the capital of Mavilange. You will meet King Naliakoda. Your poverty too will be erased, just like how ours has been erased. So he is urging them to move forward. Eir Patinatirka Sellum Varium Baradavartarum Virundum. So now moving ahead, we are going to get descriptions of three important places that were part of the kingdom of Oiman. The first one is Eir Patinam, the second one is Velur, and the third one is Amur. Eir Patinatirka Sellum Varium Baradavartarum Virundum. Alainir Thale Annam Pupavu, Talinal Serindi Tamanium Urutta. Kadunjul Mundaham Kadirmani Kadalam Nedungal Punne Nithilam Vipavum Karnal Venmanal Kadal Ula in the Mithara Padal Sandra Nadal Neduari Maninir Vipumadi Lord Peria Paninir Paduin Patinam Padarin Unganile Otaham Tuil Madinana Vingatirai Konarnda Virai Mara Virahin Karumpohesen the Marti Perundol Madi Ekarum Masar Tirumuhat Nudivel Nokin Nulai Mahalarita, Param Paduteral, Paradavar Madupa, Kilay Malar Patape, Kidangil, Koman. Talayaval Terriel, Tagayor Padi, Aral Kulal Pani Tungi over road, Varal Kulal Sutin, Vain Vain Pirhuvir. On the way to Air Patinam and the banquet of the Bartwas. Wave lapping show where swan white flowers copiously bloomed, summer starters golden chumpaks glittered. Perfectly matured prickly peyote like sapphires flowered, long leaved mast wood board pearly buds, the hot white sand inviting the wavy ocean waters. Along the poetic seashores, the path leads. Lands island, enwalled by Turkus waters, to fit its name onward to Eir Patanam of Kulas waters. 
which raised like humps of tall camels, tall tides, and fragrant agar wood fired up, pitch black smoke from the scarlet flames brought shoulders bearing a face so beautiful, which the moon envies eyes that look sharp as spear, charming fissure dames who serve frightly aged toddy to worn out guests, flower strewn kingdom of the king of Kidangil, sing in praise of the one with bloom garlands, as you dancers tap in tune with her mellifluous floats, and the host would serve you the tastiest of dish with marinated fish. Here, the poet starts describing the first town across which they have to travel to reach Oima Kingdom, or rather the capital of Oima, Mavilangay. The first town is Eir Patinam, it's a seashore town. The poet says that one can identify the place called Eir Patinam by its white sandy shore. Eir Patinam uh, is present day Marakarnam. And this was the harbour town of Oima Kingdom. So the poet says that the people were extremely generous and they would never let guests pass by without stopping for a day or two. They always served them with freshly cooked rice and fish was their staple food being fishermen. And they were synonymous with their king, Nalli Akodin. So there are two more towns through which we have to pass so that we can reach the capital of Oima kingdom and meet King Nalliyapodan. Velur sellum valiyil einar tharum virundu. Paindanai avarai pavalam kopavum karunanai kaya ganamayil avilavum. Kolungodi musundai kottang kollavum selungulai thakandal kai viral poopavum. Kollai neduvali kopam muravum mullai sandra mullai amporavin vidar kal aruviviyan malai mulki. Sudar Kal Maria Selvino Kit, Tiral Vel Nudin, Uta Kerni, Viral Vel Vainri, Velu Raidin, Uruveir, Ulaia, Urupu Avil Kurumbai, E. Traver Atta, Impuli Venjor, Tema Maini Silvalaya Mod, Aman Sutin, Amai Vara Perhuvir, Ainer Feast on the way to Velu. Greenish bean stalks with coral buds, dusky iron would bloom like the lustrous neck of pea fowls. With leathery blooms thick bind weeds too, also palm size scarlet flame lilies strewn, backyard scattered with blood red cochineal, neatly spread creepers of lovely thin jasmines, the cascade that falls between the cliffs where the sun sinks in, the husky dusk when you crane your neck up, will you reach the place with the huge spear shaped ponds that mark the name of his holy spear, Velur, a place blazing hot. Forever summer, ever under thatched huts, women of the dry land serve piping hot tangy white rice, delicate like tender mango leaves with slim bangles who serve tender meats of nilgai to ease your hunger, bear the ravenous. So we are entering the town of Velur. There's an interesting story behind the name Velur. King Nalia Gordon, when he took his throne, he started becoming very famous because of his magnanimity and generosity. Naturally, when a person becomes very famous, he will incur a lot of enemies. And Nalli Gordon too had a lot of enemies from his neighboring kingdoms. Once, many of his neighboring kingdoms' rulers joined hands together and launched a sudden attack on Nalli Gordon's Oiman. Unable to bear the sudden attack, Nalli Gordon had to flee. He took refuge under hiding and he was waiting for a chance to retaliate. But Nalya Kodan was more concerned about subjects because he was very generous, magnanimous. He was more worried about the people. He prayed to Lord Muruga because he was a staunch devotee of Lord Muruga. He asked the Lord to help him so that he can serve his people henceforth as well. As answers to his prayers, Lord Muruga appeared in his dream and he asked Nalli Akodan to take a drench in a pond nearby the next morning. Just as the Lord told him, he took a drench in the pond nearby. He collected few lotuses. The Lord had instructed him to throw lotuses towards the direction from where his enemies were planning to launch an attack. And just as he threw the lotuses towards the direction where his enemy troops were waiting for him, the lotuses turned into whale or the holy spear of Lord Muruga. And the whale 
split itself into several spears and attacked the enemies. The enemies started to flee, thinking Nalia Koden had a lot of backup. And of course, the victory was on his side. And Nalia Koden was very happy that he could serve his people henceforth. And hence, the place where the spear split itself into several spears and attacked the enemies, that place took its name Vailur, or the place where Vail attacked the enemies. Here the poet says that Vailur is a very hot place, but still it has its own special set of plants and animals. Now, the speciality of this particular place is Nilgai, a kind of deer whose meat is savoured by the people there. And so when guests arrive, women folks would serve them hot piping white rice, which is mixed with tamarind paste. And as a special gift or as a special serving, they would serve Nilgai meat as well. So moving forward, the poet says that they can stay there for the night and then proceed towards the next town, which is Amur. Amur Valamum Ulatirin Ubasaripum. Narampum go de Turta Natsine Kurungal, Kanji Kumber Eri. Nilayarum Kuttam Noki, Nidi the Irind, Pulavakayal Edta Punvai, Manichiril. Vallugir Kilit the Vadu Al Pasade, Mullare Tamare, Mughal Viri Nat Podu. Kunga cover near a Sengan Sable, Madise Ravin, Manat Totrum. Maradam Sandra Maradantan Pane, Andana Raruha Arangadi Vianahat. Amtan Kidangin, Avan Amur Aidin, Valampadanadakum, Valipuna Rerudin, Uran Kiluk known Pakatu Ulavat Tangai, Pidikayana Pinivil Sirupurat, Torikai Magadu, Mahamurai Tadupa, Irungal Ulakai Irumbu Muhamte, Avaikuman Arisi, Amalai Ven Sor, Tavaital Alavan, Kalavayod Pihuvir, the fertile Amur and the genial plowman. The like garlands strung tight with aromatic blooms, the stringo entwines, the short leaved white tea, where the lakes have amazingly still waters. Mark the time. Like the sapphire mouth of fish out of waters, the citrons. With scars of nails, the toe leaves, grainy fresh on thorny lotus that smiled as the sun rose. The male bee buzzing, blue flashes, its scarlet eyes savoring nectar. Much like the serpent gobbling the moon, farmlands of the richest green of fertile nature. The town within of Brahmins who devotedly filled, reach those pretty cool trenches along his armour. Notice those strong oxen with valorous hum strut, alongside the farmer's sisters with play thick like a packetum's trunk. Bangled arms that lovingly stopped guests from leaving, pounded with the strongest polished pestle, finest white grains of rice cooked to perfection, served with crabs too, mixed with care. We are entering Amur, which is a place near Ulunur Pete of southern India. This place is known for its white rice, which is extremely tasty. And the poet says that whenever guests arrive, people who were mostly farmers in Amur had Women folks rushing towards the guests and stopping them so that they can have their fill. The women folks of Amur never let their guests leave empty stomach. So they used to serve them with white grain rice cooked and alongside a stew made out of crabs. The poet compares the thick lustrous hair of the women folks of Amur to the thick trunk of an elephant. And so he says that. After having their fill, all that is left to do is to reach the palace of Nalia Koden. Nalia Koden in Ur Sirapum Adan Anmayum. Eri Marindan Nanavi Nilang, Eitr Karumari Kadin, Kavayadi Pei Mahal Ninnan Und Siritta Totram Pola. Pinanugaita Sivan the Pair Ugir Panital, Annal Yane, Arvitu Gulavipa. Neer Adanga Tiruvin Avan Sar Ayer Mudur. Say tum andre siridu nani aduve. Nalia Koden's great kingdom and its proximity. Flaming orange tongue, dazzling teeth, white goat kids dangling along ears, bow legged she devil who devoured the dying fat and stood with smirk with the thickly legs and long toenails. So scarlet kicking corpses much to seize the must of mammoths, oozing out with settled dust the dustless streets of his kingdom. So ancient and rich, 
is not too far, just few steps ahead. Here the poet introduces us to one of the street art forms that prevailed during that period. So he's talking about performers who used to don themselves in the form of she-devil. These people were short in stature and they were bow-legged. And they used to have long nails on their arms as well as on their toes. They had a ritual wherein they would dig for the corpses. They would savor the corpses. They would kick them around as a part of ritual to please the gods. Though the ritual seems a little gory, this was something that prevailed during the ancient times. But the poet says that even though they had such gory rituals, the streets of Nalyakoran's kingdom was extremely dustless that even a must-filled mammoth could not find an inch of dust to cover its must. So the poet says that such rich and traditional town which is a part of Oyman kingdom of Nalia Gordon, is to be savoured. So moving forward with the poem. Nalia Gordon in Aran Mani Vahil Purunarka Ainum Pulavarka Ainum Arumari Navin Andanarka Ainum Kadavul Malvare Kandividitana Adaya Vahil Avan Arungade Kuruhi The Grand Palace's Entrance For the Bards or for the Poets, for the Brahmins with Hexad Duties like the holy mounds with gods that embrace, the ever-open doors guarded you shall reach. The poet says that the gates of Nalyakodan's palace are always open for those who come seeking arms or those who come seeking help, any kind of patronage. The gates are open for poets like him, bards, minstrels, performers, brahmins and anybody who is in need of Nalyakodan's help. The guards or the soldiers who stand there do not stop any of these people who come to meet the king. Sandror Puhaldal Sei nandri aridalum sittinam inmayum inmuha muramayum iniyan adalum serindu vilangu sirappin arindori etta. Scholarly praise The one who is ever grateful sans evil company, pleasant smiling face that speaks sweet words, Attitude that acknowledge talents and skills alike. Here, the poet gives us adjectives or description of what sort of a person King Nalyakodan was. He says that Nalyakodan was a truly grateful king. He never forgot even a small act of thankfulness. And he always gifted people so that he never was in debt to anybody. And his company was such that he was a friend to scholars and to simpletons. He blended so well with the people, he was one among them. So now we know why he feels that Nalia Gordon is as special as the seven Samaritans and why he is much better than the three kings of the greater clans. Maravar Portal Anjinar Kalitalum Venjinam Inmayum Anani Puhudalum Alipadi Tangalum Valmi Kurat Vayavar Eta. The Maravas acclaim, lending hands to the submissive force never with vengeful anger, leading his men march forward with valor to vanquish the skilled sportsmen. Shower acclaims their leader. The ancient times had people belonging to the army of the king divided according to the main profession that they carried out. And based on that, there were three. Kallar, Maravar and Agamudayar. Kallars were people who owned vast pieces of lands, empty lands that were most often used for battles. And Maravars were extremely skilled swordsmen and they often led the army of the kings. And Agamudayar were people who had a lot of wealth and they carried out different businesses. Here, the poet says that all the swordsmen belonging to the Maravas group were extremely happy about King Nalyagodan because he was the perfect leader one could ever get. Mahalir Valthal Karadiyadu Mudithalum Kamurappadutthalum Oruvali Padamai Odiyadu Unarthalum Ariye Runkan Arivayar Yetha As the ladies glorified. Thoughts flown as actions, once so charming, 
yet one who had no lust so compassionate protecting distressed dames of beautiful eyes lined with the air the poet says that he was extremely charming king naliyakoran was but at the same time he never cheated on his wives he stayed true to them and he was a protector to the dames of his country the women folks of the country never felt unsafe when king naliyakoran was around பரிசிலர் ஏத்தல் அறிவு மடம் படுத்தலும் அறிவு நன்கு உடமையும் வரிசை அறிதலும் வரையாது கொடுத்தலும் பரிசில் வாழ்க்கை பரிசிலர் ஏத்தல் பேட்ரன்ஸ் பிரேஸ் கம்பேஷனேட் டுவர்ட்ஸ் காமனர்ஸ் வைஸ் அமங் தாலர்லி நோவிங் த ஸ்கில்ட் அண்ட் பெஸ்டோவிங் ஜஸ்ட் த பேட்ரன்ஸ் ஆஃப் பாஸ் பிரேஸ் அண்ட் பியாண்ட் டைம்ஸ் போயட் சேஸ் தட் நோ ஒண்டர் நல்லிய கோடன் வாஸ் பிரேஸ் பை சோ மெனி பீப்புள் ஹூ மெட் அண்ட் பிஃபோர் ஹி ஹேட் Nalia Kodan was able to identify skills in different people even though they never exhibited he knew what sort of talents they had and he always gave them gifts just to fit their talents and skills and he was extremely generous as well and very scholarly to judge them in the right way Nalia Kodan avayil veetirukum kaatchi panmeen naduvan palmadi pola இன்னகை ஆயமோடு இருந்தர் குறுகி ஆஸ் ஹி சிட்ஸ் இட் ஆப் ஹிஸ் த்ரோன் லைக் த ஃபுல் மூன் கிளஸ்டர்ட் வித் ஸ்டார்ஸ் அரவுண்ட் எவர் ஸ்மைலிங் சோ மெஜஸ்டிக் அமெட்ஸ்ட் ஆர்ட் ஃபில் ஸ்கில்ட் ஃபோக்ஸ் நவ் த போயட் கிவ்ஸ் இஸ் அ பிக்சர் இஸ் டிஸ்கிரிப்ஷன் வெரி ஷார்ட் டிஸ்கிரிப்ஷன் அபவுட் ஹவு த கிங் லுக்ஸ் வென் ஹீ இஸ் சிட்டிங் ஆன் ஹிஸ் த்ரோன் ஹி சீஸ் தட் த சீன் இஸ் சச் தட் இட் லுக்ஸ் ஆஸ் இஃப் த மூன் இஸ் சரவுண்டட் பை ஸ்டார்ஸ் so he compares the king to the moon and he compares the courtiers who are extremely talented and skilled with that of the stars that we can find on the night sky nalliya kodan munnilil yaal vasikum murai mai paingan ooham paambu pidithanna am kodu serindavalndu veengu thivavin mani nirindanna vanapin vaai amaithu vairu ser polhiya vagai amai kalathu kaanak kumilin kani niram kaduppa புகழ் வினை பொலிந்த பச்சையோடு தேன் பெய்து அமிழ்ந்து பொதிந்து இழிற்று அடங்கு புரி நரம்பின் பாடுதுறை முற்றிய பயன்தெரி கேள்வி கூடுகொள்கின் இயம் குரல் குரலாக நூல் நெறி மரபின் பண்ணி ஆகுது பிளே த லூட் தஸ் டு த கிங் லைக் த கிரிப் ஆஃப் த கிரீன் ஐட் சிம்ப் ஆன் இட்ஸ் க்ரஷிங் பைத்தன் ஸ்ட்ரம் தோ ஸ்ட்ரிங்ஸ் வித் கிரிப் பாஸ் ஃபிளெக்சிங் ஜிங்லிங் மவுஸ் லைன்ட் வித் பெல்ஸ் த பாடி ஆஃப் த லூட் கிராப் ஸ்கில்ஃபுல்லி stretched leather covering the drum painted to match the wild lemina fruits nectar tune oozes out of the stiffest strings strum sing those songs beyond the shores with messages conveyed their sweet lute and tune with notes in line with rich musical traditions the poet says that the minstrel on meeting king naliyakoran should start singing the praise of his ancestors the kingdom of oima and then the nalikodan's praise with the accompaniment of his seven string lute mannanai pugalnu paadum thanmai muduvorku muhinda kaiyinayenavum ilayorku malarnda maarbinayenavum yerorku nindra kolinayenavum theerorkalandra velinayenavum nee sila moliya alavai maasil praise the king thus those hands that embraced ancestry the branches which loved the young ones the scepter that comforted the plowmen king equivalent to kings of great lineage thus before you praise him though he gives a few tips as how he can praise king nalia kodan he says that he can relate him to his ancestors he can call him protector of younger generation he can call him uh, the protector of plowmen or the farmers and so the king will be extremely pleased with his praises king's hospitality towards seekers unstained delicate robes offered to be worn strong sweet toddy served fiery arrows stored in the amber cloth flowy garments of silk clad like arjun skin brachested like the beam himself a banquet so varied served like the blue sky with dazzling light from the sun shining so bright and young golden goblets and silver bear in them served himself as a host to serve the guest just fair here yeah, the poet says why king nalyakoran is different from so many other kings recorded in the history 
of literature as well as political. Now, King Naliyakodan never let his servants to serve the guests. He himself served them with food and toddy and to please their hunger. King Naliyakodan made sure that they were extremely satisfied. He gave them rich clothes so that they can replace their old torn ones. And he made sure that they never went hungry or empty-handed. They never returned out of King Naliyakodan's palace without being gifted generously by the king. Naliyakodan alikum parisuporutkal. Thiral sal vendri odu thevvum pula mahatri. Thiral veil mannar manneil murukki. Nayavar paanar punkan teetapin vayavar thandavaan keel nidhiyam odu. Aruvavaan atthu pal kadar parppi. Uruvavaan madhi oor kondangu. Kooruli purudha vadu aal noon kurattu aaram soolundha ailvai nimi odu. சிதர்னனை முறுக்கின் சேனோங்கு நெடுஞ்சினை தத்தற்பின் அவிழ்ந்த தோற்றம் போல உள்ளறக்கு எரிந்த உருக்கரு போர்வை கருந்தொழில் வினிஞர் கைவினை முற்றி ஊர்ந்து பெயர் பெற்ற எழிநடை பாகரோடு மாசெலவு ஒழிக்கும் அதனுடைய நோன்தாள் வாழ்முக பாண்டில் வளவனோடு தரியே அன்றே விடுக்குமன் பரிசில் நல்லிய கோடன்ஸ் கிப்ட்ஸ் தோஸ் ஒன் ஆஃப் வேலியன்ஸ் ஃப்ரம் ஃபோர்ஸ் பெஸ்டஸ்ட் ஆஃப் ராயல்ஸ் பேங்க் Poets who seek a shade welcome with Texas gifts, one of battles. Like rays spread wide across the sky. From the milky white moon at night, sculpted with thinness with huge wheels, the wooden axles and iron guards slumbered like the thin spindly branches of drumsticks, which unfurl its splendid tiny blossoms, filled with molten amber to strengthen the cover. Blacksmiths and carpenters' skills exhibited the chariot that moves with speeding elegance. Pulled by fine horses so sturdy, controlled by expertly charming riders too. The very day will he gift you as you step in. The poet says that King Nali Kodan will not wait until they exhibited their skills. He will immediately make them change their clothes. He will immediately serve them with fine food. And he would start gifting them. What sort of gifts does he give? The poet says that he often gifts them. skill people with elephants chariots loaded with lord of riches and he would also send them charioteers so that they need not worry about driving the chariot back home nalliya kodanin pogalum maachiyum mentol tugilani alkul tulangu iyal magalir agiluna viritha ammen koondalin mani mayil kalabam manji idai parappi thuni malai thavalum thuyal kalai nedum kootu எரிந்து ஊரும் இருந்து ஏற்று அருஞ்சென்னி குறிஞ்சிக்கோமான் கொய்தளிர் கண்ணி செல்லிசை நிலைய பண்பின் நல்லிய கோடனை நயந்தி நிற் செலினே நல்லிய கோடன் வேர்தி ஆஃப் பிரேஸ் ஸ்லெண்டர் ஷோல்டர் கிளாத்ஸ் ஆஃப் ஃபைன்லி டெலிகேட் விமன் வித் சாஃப்ட் ஃப்ராக்ரண்ட் ஹேர் ஸ்ப்ரெட் லைக் த ப்ளூம் ஆஃப் அ பீக் வாக் அபவுட் டு டான்ஸ் சீங் த டார்க் கிளவுட்ஸ் கேதர் டு வெத் த லேண்ட்ஸ் ஸ்வீட் கிரை தட் எக்கோ ஃப்ரம் த ஹில் டாப்ஸ் Peak so high belonging to the finest kings, ruler of the peaks, wearer of delicate garlands, may you sing his praise non-stop of Nalli Akkodan wherever you go. The poet brings the poem to a close saying, Just like how peacocks start crying on looking at the dark clouds filled with rain, the poets or the minstrels should start singing as soon as they see Nalli Akkodan. He says that, It is not because of the gifts that he is going to give, but his attitude will make them sing his praise wherever they go. And it is indeed fit for the king to be praised as one of the best kings ever recorded. It is a nice opportunity for me to share this poem with you and translate the same. Thank you so much. Looking forward to meet you next time. Thank you. Thank you.